kind of nervous, as y'all can tell. We, um, we're in the house of the Lord, though, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, our, our message today is going to be pretty impactful. Um, it's something that's been laid on my heart, but um, take care of a few housekeeping items. I see we've got some visitors here. If you haven't noticed, we've got restroom facilities here, and our nursery is just around the corner. Um, our congregation has traveled to Kentucky, and they should be returning sometime this evening. They when it, about 30 minutes ago. Good. Good. I hope they had a good time. <laughs> I was here working. <laughs> and they've been at snow. They, they had snow? <laughs> I thought we were going to get some last night. Yeah. That's kind of cold. Um, let's, uh, let's move on to some announcements. Um, if you'll look in your bulletin, we've got a general board meeting coming up April 9th at 7 deacons meeting this Thursday, April 12th at 7, and something that um, is probably a good thing to do, we've got a men's meeting Friday, April 13th at 6.30, that's going to be hosted by Seth Turner, um, address is 2567 Fountain Town Road, you know, it's, it's always a good time to get together and fellowship, um, you know, spend a little bit of time focusing on the Lord and things that he's done, you know, in our lives. We're going to have Ladies' Day uh, this coming Saturday, starting at 10 a.m. The Woman God Sees. Um, is the registration already cut off for that? or You sure can. I do have tickets, um, and please uh, stay to get your ticket or let me know for sure that you're coming. Uh, we need to go ahead and get a head count so we can get the food ordered. We're looking forward to a really good time, and um, I would love for all of you ladies to come and join us. And I may be in the nursery this morning, I'm not sure yet, but I'll be back out here after church. All right, moving down. Um, April 28th is our golf tournament. Uh, the proceeds are going to benefit our building fund. Uh, points of contact for that are Randy Williams and preacher Tim Heath. Um, I don't know if they're still looking for sponsors or teams. They are? Okay. Uh, just reach out to one of those two, and they can get you some information on that. Also coming up, um, May 5th, the Free Will Baptist Children's Home is going to be doing a 5K run or walk, and the group pre-registration is $15 each. I think Tiffany mentioned a couple weeks ago that the group rate would be for 5 people or more, um, and Tiffany Peck would be your point of contact for that. I invite you to come out to our Sunday school classes um, starting at 10 o'clock before our message here in the sanctuary at 11. Uh, Sunday school is, you know, one of those things that's a supplement to our worship here corporately. Um, it provides a different setting, you know, to kind of dig in and get into God's word. We have classes for all age ranges, so, you know, just uh, plug into there if you feel led to. Also, our prayer meeting Tuesdays at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Um, that's a time for everybody to get together and just, uh, you know, focus on, on seeking God's face, with whatever may be going on in their life here um, Tuesdays at 7. Also, our Wednesday evening services at 7 o'clock. We've got a youth program if you're, you know, you're looking to plug in to that. Um, do we have any more announcements? Wow, quite much today. I'm sweating a little bit up here. Is it hot in here or is it just me? <laughs> um, <laughs> What's that? New grandson. You got a new grandson? <laughs> Congratulations. And also, he said I'd take it up with Uncle Goldie next time. 
Praise the Lord. That's, that's all. I know they were pretty rough. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. We dodged that one. Um, if there's no more announcements, I'd like to turn it over to Miss Marsha. We'll go into uh, a time of some music. Yeah. 407. If you'll turn in your hymnals, um, we'll sing Because He Lives.
I had to turn the mic off. Y'all didn't want to hear me sing. <laughs> All right. We've come to the time in our service today um, to lift up those requests that we might have to the Lord. Um, do we have any outspoken needs? Amen. The, ones, the ones on the highway, keep us from harm and danger. That's right. To and from. We also ask for travel and mercies for our congregation as they're returning from Kentucky. Um, we hope that they don't run into any more crazy weather. Um, anybody on this side? Uh, there's been some radiation impacts in recent past. Uh, we've also seen rain in two other families. Yeah, I saw on the news uh, one from Pinehurst, I think. Definitely remember, remember that. Sister Andrea, as we get ready to leave the South Country, surely do that. Sister Lynn said it was April 6th, and that's not a secret day. Um, I think President Trump would be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Any more outspoken needs? I have one. Um, as we turn our eyes to God to pray, remember me up here this morning. Um, you know, I'm, I'm visibly nervous. You know, God, God calls us to work outside of our comfort zone. That's where, that's where growth happens. Um, any unspoken needs? Amen. Um, Daddy, you want to come up and lead us in prayer this morning? Let us bow, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just come thank you for all the gifts and blessings you've laid upon us, especially this day, and allowing us to be a part of it. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and shortcomings, Lord. Heavenly Father, as we go further into this worship service, just send your spirit and fill each heart with thy holy presence. And Heavenly Father, just bless the messenger and let us supply it to our hearts as we go forth through the rest of this week and when we get into short and narrow rows, the hedge rows of life, let us pull this out of our heart and apply it to our lives. And Heavenly Father, we ask all these blessings in your holy name. Amen. All right, we'd like to ask the ushers to continue our praise with our tithes and offerings. Join me in prayer. Father, I thank you for this time we have to come to you to uh, give a, a little offering back to you to use it as your will. Please bless this offering as, um, as we take it out of our pockets and put it in the plates. Uh, please uh, apply it to the needs of the church. And these things ask your name. Amen.
We'd like to continue our service with uh, a special solo as Mallory comes forth. Testing, turn it down. <laughs> okay. Um, this today is a special day. Um, today marks the one year anniversary that Mama left us. Um, and then the eleventh will be a year for daddy. Um, so I kinda wanted to do something special this morning. Um, the song that I'm gonna sing is the very first song that I remember singing out at another church, and one of those reasons was because of my mama. She was my always my number one supporter, and she would take me to list to find music. And this one, when we first did it, was on a cassette tape, and I lost it somehow. But I, I got the, got it again, and it, it holds a special place in my heart. And just listen to the words. I said you were my shepherd. I've told you were my all. If by chance I stumble, that you would break my fall but these were merely words i spoke when others were around until i saw what you would do when i was down When I thought there was no way 
ground and welcome one another in the house of the Lord and just uh, extend a right hand of fellowship. Y'all ready to hear a message? Because I've got one. Um, I, I want to go into this first, though, uh, before I get into what God has laid on my heart to talk about today. You know, I've, through this whole process, I've, I've had to examine myself and realize what it means to be a submissive servant to our, our God. You know, I... I've never in my mind fathomed that God would use me in such a way to be standing here in front of you to tell you a message from him. The way it all happened, I got a text message. I get up at 4.30 in the morning to, to go to my job, and uh, I was in bed asleep when the text message came through at 11.30 at night. I went home the next day after work, and that's when I got the text message. So it kind of hit me off, you know, took, took the rug out from under my feet. The preacher asked me to fill in for him. And my first gut felt response was, no, I can't do this. But what does that, what does that say about me? You know, I, I constantly pray for ways to serve the kingdom. I asked God for provided opportunities to serve him. And then for me to turn around and say, no, God, I can't do that because, you know, what, what would people think of me? What makes me qualified to stand up here and give a message to your people? Well, I'll tell you what qualifies me. The fact that I'm a sinner and the fact that I have been redeemed by my Lord and Savior gives me the authority from God from heaven to stand up here and give you a message. So just bear with me. I'm working through some nerves. I wanted to qualify why I'm up here and give that to you. So now we can move into some prepared things. We all know that Easter Sunday was last Sunday, right? We all came. We worshiped. You know, we, we can kind of say that Easter's in the rearview mirror now. You know, you go into Walmarts and Walgreens and all that stuff, and the Easter candy is marked 50% off. They're already making way for suntan lotion and, you know, Memorial Day stuff. It's out there. We get invitations to go to Easter egg hunts, and, you know, we get to church early to, you know, get a seat for the Easter service. We plan on who's cooking the fried chicken and where we're going to eat, you know, Easter dinner and, and all those things. But do we ever stop to realize what that actually means to us? We can all say that the Easter celebration is due to the fact that Jesus defeated the cross. He, he beat it into submission. But I want to tell you, he's alive just as much today as he was last Sunday. He's just alive as much as he was the day that he left the tomb. And we oftentimes miss that point, don't we? I know I do. 
But what's the significance of that? You know, when we, we're asked the, the question, why did Jesus die? We tend to have this, this ready-made response that, that we just put out there. It sounds a lot like he died for the purpose of saving me from my sin. I want that to sink in just a minute because where I'm fixing to go, we're, we're going to uncover some uncharted territory in my life. Christians do a great job of making this out to be the finality of Jesus' sacrifice. And the reason why I say that, without truly understanding what Jesus died for, it's hard to see the big picture of how we stack up as believers to what God was actually doing that day on Calvary. And because of the lack of clarity regarding Jesus' death, deceitful doctrines have crept into our churches. The scriptures have been twisted into cultural cliches, and false teachings about why Christ died and what was accomplished by his death. If you have your Bibles with you, and I hope you do, I'd like you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'll be reading from verses 14 through 21. Starting in verse 14, it says... Whatever we do, it is because Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for everyone, we also believe we have all died to the old life we used to live. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live to please themselves. No longer live to please themselves. That's key there. Instead, they will live to please Christ, who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others by what the world thinks about them. Once I mistakenly thought of Christ that way, as though he merely, he were merely a human being. How differently I think about him now. What this means is that those who become Christians become new persons. They're not the same anymore. For the old life is gone, a new life has begun. All this newness of life is from God, who brought us back to himself through what Christ did. And God has given us the task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. This is the wonderful message he has given us to tell others. We are Christ's ambassadors, and God is using us to speak to you. We urge you, as though Christ himself were here pleading with you, be reconciled to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be an offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. So here we have a clear statement from the Apostle Paul regarding the reason for Jesus' death. It wasn't for the sole purpose of forgiveness of our, our, our sins, but it was the purpose of reconciliation to the Father. That's the key for us to keep in the forefront of our minds as we walk in our everyday lives. You know, Jesus made way for us to be upright and standing before the Father. Just forgiveness of our sins is a byproduct of that. We were forgiven because the way was made for us to be reconciled to the Almighty. We like to twist this sacrifice in our minds, although it's not always on purpose, into a blank check mentality. With that being said, I'd like to move into four things that Jesus didn't die for. The first point is that Jesus didn't die for our American dream. You know, our country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Our money says, in God we trust. But he didn't die for us to become wealthy. 
He didn't die for us to have good health. And he certainly didn't die for us to be comfortable. In fact, Jesus says in John 15, 20, Do you remember what I told you? A slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally they will persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. With that being said, the fact remains true. God blesses those who belong to him. Sometimes with worldly comforts, but spiritual discipline. And sometimes it's with worldly suffering and spiritual growth. However, sometimes the devastatingly harmful teachings are taking place in churches all across America, claiming that physical blessings must be a sure sign that God has us in his favor. This is simply not true. It flies in the face of the Bible. I don't, um, I don't necessarily know if anywhere in the Bible says that, that says, follow me and I'll, I'll give you a brand new house on the hill or a fishing boat or, you know, a brand new car. Or, you know, all these things are temporal. We, we somehow take what God has blessed us with and we, we push it out to material things. We're taught as Christians that our treasures aren't stacked up here on earth. Jesus' death means that he has atoned for our sin. And in that, he made the exchange for his righteousness, our reconciliation to God. These are the only riches you're promised in this life. The joy and peace that comes with knowing that you have a good and loving father who has saved you at the infinite cost of his only son. Can I get an amen on that? Just want to check, see if y'all are awake. Point number two. Jesus didn't die to be the poster boy for our cause. Jesus isn't a conservative Republican, and he's not a progressive Democrat. Jesus is God. The name of Jesus has been used for all of these isms and it's so easy to take our own traditions, our worldviews, our causes, and cut and paste Jesus' name to those. We call them Christian. Jesus' death was the celebrated appointment of his coming kingdom. <laughs> Not an invitation to use his name to legitimize our own little kingdoms that we establish here on earth. Now don't get me wrong, I, I support you know, local causes, I, I support social causes and all of that stuff. But those things cannot save what well, can save. <laughs> Y'all know it. We often place too much stock into these things to elevate our own decency. They cannot change sinful hearts, and they cannot save from eternal death. And in the end, they can't offer any more than a better life in this passing world. Point number three. Jesus didn't die so you wouldn't have to change. Keeping that in mind... Uh, I'd like to turn to Colossians chapter 1, and I'll be reading from verses 19 through 29. Starting in verse 19, it says, For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and by him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of his blood on the cross. 
This includes you who were once so far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has brought you back as his friends. He has done this through his death on the cross in his own human body. And as a result, he has brought you into the very presence of God. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand in it firmly. Don't drift away from the assurance you have received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world. And I, Paul, have been appointed by God to proclaim it. I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am completing what remains of Christ's sufferings for his body, the church. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his message in all its fullness to you Gentiles. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to his own holy people. For it has pleased God to tell you, his people, that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. For this is the secret. Christ lives in you, and this is your assurance that you will share in his glory. So everywhere we go, we tell everyone about Christ. We warn them and teach them with all the wisdom God has given us. For we want to present them to God. Perfect in their relationship to Christ. I work very hard at this as I depend on Christ's mighty power that works within me. So back to point number three. Jesus didn't die so you wouldn't have to change. The whole point of Jesus' death was so that we could change. Without his death, there's no justification before God. There's no Holy Spirit coming to heal our rebellious souls and make worthy our small acts of worship. Without Jesus, we're trapped. We're prisoners to our own sinful desires and couldn't obey God even if we wanted to. God had every right to leave us that way. But he didn't. Amen. That's, that's the best news that, that I've heard in a long time. Out of sheer force of his loving will, because of grace alone, he sent Christ to take on our sin. This encounter with such unimaginable grace will change you. I know it's changed me, but will I still sin? I sure will. Until the day I die. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, believers in Christ will persevere. God will grow and multiply your love for Him and His people. God will begin to kill off your love for sin and the love for self. Salvation is amazing in the fact that it is both a radical recalibration as well as a slow and steady march which allows us to be more and more like Christ each day. You know, once, once the time comes that, that you ask Christ into your heart, it's not zero to a hundred. It's not just an overnight transformation in the, in the growth aspect. You know, right up here, we oftentimes see that as the finish line, but that's the starting line. We're, we're reborn again in Christ, but we're called to make that slow and steady march to, to, to unshackle ourselves from our old way of thinking, our old lives. That's where God's grace is applied to us as Christians. Grace not only saves us, it trains us. It teaches us to take Jesus' side against our own sins. This grace brings you repentance. Not like a kid forced to eat their vegetables, but like a prisoner free from their chains and shackles for the first time. 
The sacrifice of Jesus allows us to see the fruits of our redemption through the reconciliation that God has, has so freely provided to us. Point number four. Jesus didn't die to merely raise our own moral standards. I want to illustrate a point with this statement. Examine our interna interactions with one another, both in and out of God's house. How many put, people look for morals rather than salvation? How many of us want law rather than grace? You know, I got I to gotta pick on myself a little bit here. Um, those of you that know me pretty well know that I used to have road rage pretty good. If, so, if somebody cuts you off in traffic, what's the first thing that we tend to go to? Man, I tell you what, I hope there's a cop around the corner. You got your arms full. As you're walking out of the grocery store or the convenience store and somebody slams a door in your face. You couldn't see that I was, you know, on my way. I was trying to go out the door and you hit me with it. We want swift judgment. <laughs> we want a swift and worthy punishment. This isn't the mentality of Christ. And it shouldn't be ours. It shouldn't be mine. We were extended grace freely and not because we deserve it. I want to say that again. We were extended grace freely and not because I deserve it. We as Christians can have a problem with grace. It's not a consumer good. You can't pick it up off the shelf at Walmart. It's not quantifiable under human logic. Grace reveals our own lack of autonomy. Our utter dependence on God. And may be quite unattractive to people who want to believe they're acting out of their own free will as God allows us to have. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, grace is all we need standing before God. It's a free gift to us. Our religious, self-righteous, and oftentimes hypocritical hearts try to make us add our due to Jesus is done. But he doesn't need it. And I want to illustrate this example. So we had some work done at our house on Saturday. We had a, st a stump grinder come out. and He took out three pretty big stumps. And the ground was dry, leveled everything out, got all the wood chips out. Backfilled the holes and everything like that. And the stump grinder said, well, it's a good thing that, that I came today because it's supposed to rain. Maybe it was Friday. I think it was Friday. It's supposed to rain Saturday. Yesterday was Saturday. Today is Sunday. My days are running together. <laughs> so in that, I went to go buy some sod and put down. The guy that came out to grind our stump said it's going to rain on Saturday, the weather report said it was going to rain on Saturday. But what was I outside doing yesterday? I had laid my sod, and it was starting to mist rain. And I said, I need to water this sod. Give it a good, give it a good jump start. I'm not kidding. And it wasn't a strong mist. It was just the aggravating mist where you got to keep turning your wipers on and off. So I was out there with the water hose, watering the sod when it's raining. God has taken care of that in our lives. 
but I was trying to add my do to what God had already provided for. I am guilty of that. Somehow we fooled ourselves into believing our spiritual resume will make us acceptable to God. We get comfortable with a moral standard that we can attain. Mine's about right here, for over here on this side. Mine's about right here. And then we pass judgment on those who can't. Our pride and self-righteousness are just as offensive to God as the sins of murderers and thieves. And I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, my sins are equally as offensive. We all desperately need the redemption and the reconciliation provided by Jesus as found at the foot of the cross. To bring this message back together so that we can take it out of these walls, take it forth into the world, and we can live it, and we can practice it, we can teach it, I'd like to reiterate that Jesus didn't die so we could achieve our American dream, but so that we could inherit immeasurable riches in the presence of God for eternity. Jesus didn't die so we could create our own little social and political kingdoms in this age, but so that we could rejoice in the coming kingdom of the next. Jesus didn't die so we could keep on sinning, but so that we could, we could and we would have the desire to stop sinning and glorify Him in all that we do. Jesus didn't die so we could build a spiritual resume of good works, but so that we could resist our own processes and rest in His righteousness as we obey out of love and humility. I'd like to ask Miss Marcia if you'd come at this time and um, play what's been laid on your heart as we turn to a time of invitation. If you have your uh, hymnals out, let's turn to number 307, Just As I Am. right you know we're not guaranteed tomorrow we don't know what the future holds for us if you've never made that public profession the time is now the Holy Spirit's moving I felt it in my life I 
feel it here today. Will you come? Amen. Join me with a, a word of prayer um, as we close. Uh, Preacher Tim asked me to continue on with our commitment to prayer fasting so at this time if um, you want to as we close make your way up to the altar you can lift your eyes to God and pray right where you're at um, but we'll close and then we'll kind of um, go into that prayer fast Dear Lord, we come to you at this time thanking, for the, thanking you for the opportunity to just be in your house, to hear your word, to make your word pertinent in our lives, to allow it to just penetrate our hearts, to allow us to be one step closer to you. We thank you for the, the ones that are here we thank you for the opportunity to praise your name. We take this time to lift you up as the name above all names. Dear Lord, we gather around this altar also to just take time out of our lives to let you know that we're making a commitment to you to turn our eyes unto you for guidance as we move forward as a church, as we grow both personally, as we grow spiritually, and as we grow as a congregation. We want to thank you for allowing us to just submit to you in each one of our lives we ask that you lead God and direct us in the path that you would have each one of us to go. Dear Lord, we want to remember these needs that have been asked for prayer this morning, the sickness, the issues that have been unspoken, the travel and mercies, and all the unspoken needs that don't go mentioned. Dear Lord, we thank you for being Lord of our life. And we thank you, most importantly of all, for the sacrifice of your son. For the forgiveness of our sins. And the reconciliation that that sacrifice brought us to. It's with these things we ask in your holy name. Amen.